And now let's open our Bibles up if you have your scripture. Go ahead and open to Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to be uh, looking at verses 19 through 23 today. Those are going to be our verses. You know, I'm loving this verse by verse thing because I don't know that I would ever have just focused on Ephesians 1, 19 through 23 on my own. I, and so, I'm glory to God who, who uh, gives us this word that we're able to, to look at it deep in a deeper way. So, if we remember last week, Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus. He was praying for uh, things like spiritual wisdom and knowledge and insight so that the church would grow in their understanding of God. Um, talked a little bit about light, how, how uh, there's this light that's in Christian and in believers. And so we're going to pick up today in verse 19 where Paul is still praying. This is the same prayer. And he's, just, he's just continuing his prayer. Uh, and I'll read, it, I'll read it right now. And what is this immeasurable greatness of his great power towards us who believe? According to the mighty workings of his strength, he exercised his power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above any ruler, authority, power, and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church. The Bible might say for the benefit of the church, which is his body. The fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. So, it's interesting, you know, the Holy Spirit brings us to the scripture this week and most of us have been dealing with some power stuff this week. You know, we kind of are thinking power. And that's kind of something that we've been thinking about all week. Um, or at least since Thursday. Maybe, maybe thinking more about the absence of power. And, and kind of how that's impacting us. You know, I, I hate to be a baby, but man, we're not ready for no power. <laughs> we don't live very well like that. Uh, we're pretty reliant on it. Find pretty much everything we do. From the moment we wake, we wake up to the moment we go to bed is, is somehow includes electricity, power. You know, it, it, that storm came through Thursday morning and it was like that and, you know, I'm not trying to over be, dramatic, over be overly dramatic, but it changed our dynamic of our home, our, our family for, for the next few days. You know, if you live in the country, it's the well, and so there's no water. No, no showers, no toilets, no uh, no drinking water, you know, of course, no TV, no computers, no AC, no Wi-Fi, no computers, no phones, no nothing, uh, no cooking. Basically, we were left with a dark and hot place. That's all. Dark and hot. That's pretty much what we were left with. And it sure made life a lot more difficult, too, having no power. Is definitely more difficult. So if we take this lesson uh, about the value of power that we relearned this last couple of days, and we get to relearn it probably twice a year in our area, um, and we apply it to our spiritual life, we, we can start to see some truths that kind of come out in this scripture. We can start to understand the scripture a little bit, maybe more of a full way. What is our life? What is our church? Without power, the immeasurable greatness of his power. What, what is the what is the Christian life? What is our church? When the power's out. It's kind of a dark, hot house, isn't it? Pretty much all all we would be as as the church. We wouldn't really be functioning in his power. We wouldn't be impacting the world. We're powerless. We're weak. We're soft. We wouldn't really have the ability to do much of anything besides gather together and, and go home and be dark and hot. Ultimately. Ephesians 1, 19, we're going to dig into this one verse by verse. 19 says, And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to his mighty, according to the mighty working of his strength? Paul uses three terms here, all, all referring to power, all referring to God's power. Uh, in the Greek, if, if you look at the original Greek for the scripture, there's, there's three words that come out, and, and it's pretty interesting if we look at it, if we dig right into it. The first word, um, the word that we use uh, for power is 
Inertion. Inertion is the word we get energy from, which means in the Greek, supernatural energy. Paul's saying God's power is supernatural energy. It's the first thing he says. The second one is, is kratos. Kratos is power that belongs to God alone. Uh, it's interesting, this word kratos, which means power as well, is used 12 times in the New Testament, and 11 of those times it refers specifically to God's specific own power that's unique to him. One time, and this is interesting, one time in Hebrews 2, verse 14, kratos refers to the power that Satan has over death. Satan has the, the power of death, um, which is unique to him. It's, it's the only power that Satan has is the power of death. Uh, and Satan gained his power, of course, we know, by rebelling against God. And, uh, and we know, because we've read the, the rest of the story, that power is defeated. Death is defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. So what power Satan had or, or, or grabbed God to has already been defeated. So his unique power is already, is already lost. And the third word that we, that we see in the scripture in the original Greek is, is discus. Discus is might or strength. So when we look at these, these three words, supernatural energy, power that belongs to God alone, and might and strength, we, we're kind of getting this three, three time repeat thing that we see in scripture once in a while. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. When the Bible repeats something three times, when it, when it hits something three times in a row, it's, it's, it's the, the equivalent of like an exclamation point, like three exclamation points. Basically saying, notice this, read, understand this, get this, make sure you don't miss this. God's got power. He's, he's great in power. Powerful, powerful, powerful. But we need to make sure that, that that's, that's always our, our uh, posture as we, as we are understanding our Father, our Lord, uh, our Lord God. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. So, all that to say this. What's power? What is it? Like, that's kind of an abstract idea isn't it, of God. Like, we see this supernatural energy, mighty strength, His alone. But, but what is it? You know, what, what is power? <clears throat> it's not like the power that we're talking about with generators and electricity, it's a whole, a whole different ballgame. You know, it's, it's the power that, well, these next few verses talk about exactly what the power is capable of. And that's what the next, the rest of the, rest of the scripture for today talks about is, is what God's power can do, does do. And, and you know, it, it's kind of interesting if we, if we start to categorize God's power and things that we can understand. So let's look at verse 20. It says, he exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens. The power of life. We talked about Satan has the power of death. Nobody else, nowhere else, through nothing else, has the power of life except for God himself. That's awesome. Because so we're going to, just keep with me, we're going to relate this in a minute. But the power of life lies in the hands of God alone. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in us, the Holy Spirit. The same power that we have available to us is the same power that, that God says here is for my son. And Jesus says, okay, well, it's also for my church. This power of, of Holy Spirit life. It also says that he's born. You know, yeah, he, he raised Jesus from the dead, but he also says that he, God seated Jesus at his right hand in heaven for a purpose. So not only does the power Free life, it also gives authority. It gave Jesus this, this full authority over everything on earth. To be at God's right hand literally means He's in charge. Everything is put under His feet for His His authority, under His rule, under His reign. And He's got full say over how it goes. God put Jesus at his right hand so he could bring heaven to earth through Christ. And the rest of this letter of Ephesians, not just the verses we're doing, the rest of the letter of Ephesians explains exactly how Jesus does this, how Jesus brings heaven to earth. But Paul gives us a foreshadowing in his, in his next three verses, 21 through 23. Verse 21 says, Far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, every title given, 
not only in this age, but the age to come. <clears throat> Take a look at these words that Paul uses here to describe Jesus' position. He says, uh, ruler, authority, power, and dominion, and title. That's basically everything. That's rule over everything. Every level of government, every level of leadership, every earthly leader, Jesus has authority over. Anything that, anything that impacts our life, Jesus has authority over it. There's a lot to understand from these words, especially when we start looking ahead to the armor. You know, what? Ephesians 6 leads up to the armor. You know, when the end of the, Ephesians, the end of the book of Ephesians, we get to the armor of God and, and how that's going to equip us uh, to overcome the world. So when we get there, we're going to kind of relate that back to this, but right now Paul's words can be understood like this. So, <clears throat> you have concerns about your government, right? You have concerns about our, our leadership, our country, our leadership locally. Or, uh, we have concerns about the way that the school system is going. We have concerns about uh, pretty much everything that we see going on around us in leadership. It doesn't seem right, does it? The leadership around us doesn't seem like Jesus is in charge, in charge of it, does it? Because was, is that how Jesus would leave when, when Jesus prove the things that are being approved today? Would Jesus allow the things that are being allowed today? It kind of creates a problem, doesn't it? Because we know scripture is a problem. Scripture can't be, uh, can't be wrong. It can't be uh, you know, proven, proven just incorrect. So how do we reconcile Jesus, the authority of all, above all, in charge of all, reconcile that with our current circumstance of the earth being a mess, our country being a mess, the, the school, the colleges are, are saying this is true, and, and it goes against God's word, and, and the things that are in God's word are being trampled. How do we reconcile Jesus above all, the authority of all, in charge of what's going on right now? I'm glad you asked. Amen. That's what we wanted to talk about this morning. <clears throat> so if, if Jesus left one thing. What did, what did Jesus leave here on earth to be his hands and his feet? His church. Jesus left his church. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ascend to heaven and I'm going to send you the helper. Because he's going to be more help to you than I can be right now. I'm going to send the helper and I'm going to leave you to complete the work. To complete this mission. Well, part of the mission is to lead godly be God the leader, to lead people in the way of, of what the Bible says, of what God says is true. So if all things are brought under Jesus' control, and, and they, they should all be done according to what Jesus wants, there's, there's something going on. Ephesians 23 says this. I'm sorry, he subjected everything under his feet, appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Jesus is the answer to all the problems in the world. And church, we're his solution. Jesus has the answers and he's put, put the saddle on us. And says, now go do it, church. Go, go, lead the, go lead the nation, church. Go lead the world. Lead your town. Lead your universities. You're the people I'm calling on to do what I've been given the power and authority to do. So this is, this is starting to almost feel like some bad news for us. Because if, if Jesus has authority and power, the ability to be above all things, over all things, to have his way in all things, and he left his church to do that work, and it's not happening, where's the disconnect? It's in the church. It's in the church, guys. That's every believer, every every man, woman that, that claims to be a Christian who isn't leading, who isn't making a godly impact in the world. Let me say it this way. To the, to the same extent that the church steps up and does what we're called to do, to that same extent Jesus, Jesus exerts his authority over the world. To, as much as we're willing to, to walk it up is how far he's exerting his authority. So we can also say 
Obviously, that when the power structures of this world are doing things contrary to the ways of Christ, it means the church is failing in leading. <coughs> We're failing to show the world the true hope and the, and the love and the light that we have in us. Right? We just read about that last thing. There's, we have a light in us, a God-given light that shines for the world, that's going to impact the world. Well, if we're not doing it, you end up with what we're seeing. Let's, I can even break this down as, as bluntly as we can. And, and we don't like to hear this, but all the failures in the world are due to a failure of Christ Church to step up with the power and the authority and the dominion and the title that we are given by his name. Jesus is the head of the world. He's the head of the church. Therefore, the church, operating within God's will, fills and transforms the world according to Jesus' plan, purpose, and, and what he's got planned. So, pretty interesting concept, isn't it? Not necessarily a happy concept, not necessarily makes feel good today, but it does give us this thing like, you, you've got a big job, church. We've got, a, we've got a, big, a big purpose, a big job ahead of us. You know, coming in and gathering and, and going home and seeing you next Sunday, that's not enough. That's not going to do it. It's not enough. And, and our world is just is living proof that that's not enough. The church has gone so... And I'm not going to bad about Jesus' church because it's his church and he loves his church, but I think we can do better. I think we can live it out better, church. I think we can impact the world. You know, and it's not because we come to church, it's because when we're not when we're not in this gathering, we're, we're as close to Jesus as the world's saying, and we're leaning that way. We're loving that way. We're letting God's word reign supreme in all the decisions we make, all the things we say, all the things we do. If you're, if you're the manager, the boss, the assistant manager, the whatever at your job, you've got this golden opportunity. Even if you're not, you have this golden opportunity to rate, to rise up to the occasion. Because when you when you step into this thing and say, you know what, I want to lead, like as Christ my example, I want to be a leader, I want to be a Christ-like leader, all of a sudden things are gonna, I guarantee you guys will open up doors, you're gonna have opportunities to lead in a, in a Christ-like way. And be that change in the world that, that he's calling us to be. You know, and the rest of the book of Ephesians, the whole rest of the book, talks about this concept. He goes on to explain exactly how the church can step up and do the things that Christ has called us to do, be the church that Christ has called us to be. The whole rest of the book talks about it. And so I'm excited about that. I'm not just going to leave you guys with a, a cliffhanger and you're like, well, we failed. See you next week. We're going to, this the whole next. The rest of the book, next five chapters, are all going to speak into this how we do it. How do we, how do we lead well? How do we make this impact in the world that's going to make eternal differences? Because that's what this is all about. That's, that's, why we, that's why we do this. That's why Christ died for the forgiveness of your sins and so that you can be the, the hands and feet of, of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. To be his voice. But we've got to do it biblically. We've got to do it according to Scripture. So what does this mean for us? How can we take this home today and start? Being a quiet, timid, inward-facing church doesn't seem like an option anymore, does it? I mean, that's the easy way. That's comfortable. We can, you know, discuss the carpet and discuss the, you know, the soundboard and, and how our worship look. But that's not really, in the grand scheme of things, the point is it? The coffee, the snacks, all the stuff. That we, it's all good things and all things that bless the body of Christ. And I'm all for those things. But let's not get so wrapped up in, in the meeting that we don't impact the world for Christ. The meeting is, the meeting can happen anywhere. It can happen in a barn. I mean, shoot, this isn't far from a barn. I mean, it really is a barn. The, the gathering can happen anywhere. It's what happens after the gathering that makes us the church. It's what happens Monday that makes us the church. So being a quiet, timid, inward-facing church, us four no more type of, type of thing just isn't, isn't what we're called to be. It's comfortable, it's easy, but it's not us. 
If we truly believe what the Bible says, we must be leaders impacting this world for Christ. No other way around it. We can be leaders at home, be leaders anywhere we go, at Walmart, anywhere you are, you can be a leader for Christ. How do you be a leader for Christ? You have that light in you. You have that, that God light in you, and let that thing shine. Love people. Show people hope. Speak kindly to people. This world could use a little more kindness, a little more hope and love and mercy, and, and just being nice to people. If we're, if we're truly living with Christ in us, people are going to be like, why are you so speaking nice? Jesus? <laughs> That's why. It's not me, because I'm pretty, I'm pretty grumpy normally. It's Jesus in me that, that makes that difference. It's Jesus in us that shows us light. And that's what we have to be, church. That's, and that's what this whole rest, like I said, that's what the rest of the book of Ephesians is dealing with. How do we do it? I'm not excited about that. You guys ready to baptize? All right, let's open up the mic for a second. Any thoughts coming out of this? This is a short one, but... It, Less important is the length is, is the content, and, and I hope that I hope that you understand. It wasn't a, it wasn't meant to be harsh, but it was supposed to maybe leave us with with the desire to, to do a little more, to be what Christ has called us to be. Any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, thoughts coming out of that? I know I didn't. I know I missed something. I always do. So what is it? <laughs> All right. Okay, we leave it at that. Let's go be the church, right? Start right now. Let's pray, and then we will get changed and get ready to go baptize. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we'll let, this, let these words out of Ephesians stick, Lord. Let, let, us, let us grow from these words of Ephesians. Of, you know, the Bible says all things are under the authority of Christ. It says all things are under the authority of Christ. And we know ultimately they will be under the authority of Christ. We also believe that right now there's authority of Christ that that happens, that should happen, Lord, as the, as the body of Christ, as believers. You call us to go and impact the world, to be his hands and feet, to be the body of Christ out changing the world. Lord, we just ask you to equip us. Give us the give us the courage and the strength to, to do it well, to, to meet the to meet the call of, of being leaders in this world. Or we can impact one person. We can impact one one job, one 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 place because you called us to do it, Lord. I just ask that you would give us the ability to do that and, and give us the the strength to do it well. We know that's what that's what you want from us. In Jesus' name, we pray. We all said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's go be <coughs> baptizers. <laughs> <laughs>